who has heard of Echo360? Most of you? Great, so they've recently released a new version of their product called the Active Learning Platform. And the whole idea of, of it really is um, to make lectures um, in particular more interactive. So what we're gonna do today is just kind of go through uh, how that works and then I'll sort of talk about what UNSW is, is looking at doing with it potentially. Um, what are some of the advantages of it and, and obviously disadvantages as well. So firstly, has everyone been able to get in? Okay. Great, I'm just gonna hit record on this as well. So I'm recording the screen for the video people. Great, so you may have noticed that I put up on the questions area. I'm just gonna pop into the platform now. So if you go to the question icon up here and give me the thumbs up if uh, you can get in again just as an indicator that it works. All right. We've managed to have five people like that so it looks like we're underway. So effectively what I'm doing here is I've uploaded my PowerPoint presentation and you've got the ability to do quite a few things with it. So here's a Q&A area. And what I'd like to do throughout this, if you've got any questions, it'd be great if you could type them through this particular chat facility so we can give it a bit of a go and get a feel for how it works. I'm just gonna pop on to the next slide. Okay, so I've got a little activity here to start off with. I'm just going to unhide that for you. So originally I'm from New Zealand and I'm curious to see uh, how many people know where New Zealand is. So if you want to give that a go, you should see that question come up on your screen. And you should be able to tap on the area where you think New Zealand is. I can't see uh, who puts what answers, so give it a go even if you've got no idea at all. So to browse, to browse through, you should see something down here. It is a little bit more difficult on a mobile, and I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of that um, as we go on. So I've had two, two submissions so far. It possibly is, yeah, apologies. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hit uh, show results. All right, <laughs> most of you are very cleared up with your geography. So I can see, I can see where your answer is. But actually, uh, that is, you're on about the Chatham Islands, which is part of New Zealand there, so that, that still counts. <laughs> um, yep. I would love to be sort of up around, I think this is Fiji. So whoever put that, that's not a bad answer. It's a lovely spot if you ever get there. And we'll just do one more warm-up activity. So um, the University of New South Wales is based in Sydney. I'm just going to unhide this for you. Now, of course, you can uh, obviously Google the answer and cheat, but I'd prefer you didn't. <laughs> so again, click on roughly where you think Sydney is. Is that a little bit easier on mobile to? <laughs> Maybe toggle backwards and forwards, I've just unhidden it. So you do have the ability to hide and hide the slides, which can be quite useful because you can upload your presentation before students come to class. So um, yeah, you might want to sort of wait to release the activities like I am now. Um, so they don't grab the answers before they come in. Okay, we'll have another 10 seconds or so on that. Oh, 
Okay. Who put this one here? It's incorrect. <laughs> it's this one here. Who put that one? That's a, that's a very accurate answer. So, um, yeah, so we've sort of got Melbourne around here, Sydney up here, and uh, Brisbane up there. So you, you've kind of got the right, the right cities. Um, so good attempt. Right. Sorry, this mouse is a little bit fidgety. Okay, so just to give you a, just a really, um, I suppose, high-level overview about the University of New South Wales. So we've got um, about 55,000 students there or thereabouts. Uh, the majority of our students are on campus. We're looking to increase online uh, enrolments, though, um, as is what I understand you're also looking at. So I, I'm part of the business school, but we have a number of faculties um, about... And here's just a picture of the uh, campus. So in the uh, far distance, you kind of see a, a very slim tower there. That's roughly where the Opera House and Harbour Bridge is. So we're relatively close to the, to the CBD. And that gives you a bit of the idea of the, um, the campus there in terms of its size. And the location to the beach, which um, Sydney is basically built around. So if you're uh, ever in the area, you're more than welcome to, to pop in and say hello. Right. Here's just an example of uh, something else which is taking a little bit to load. But what you can also do with this tool is insert video slides, multimedia slides. So it's quite nice when it works uh, to show the students um, or allow them to um, add a video or play a video directly. Oh, it's working for someone. That's nice. So this platform itself is kind of built, a good way to think about it is, is in three different types of, of ways. Uh, one is before class. So for those of you that have used or seen Echo 360, you might have seen the software Personal Capture. Anybody seen that? So that allows you to, um, to really simply create a desktop recording and it publishes to this particular platform. But you also might upload your presentation in advance. So it's getting into that flip class model. What's really nice about using the tool in that sense is that students can start asking questions and making notes before they come to class. And what I'll show you soon is um, so you'll get some really nice analytics. So you get a re really good understanding of um, what's been viewed, what are the discussions going on, um, or what are the activities are students answering things correctly. So it's a nice thing for you to think about in that flip model. Um, so you've got the notes taking ability as well. Again, this is for the flip side of things. What's really nice about students taking notes in this platform is that when they're doing it during class, it'll actually sync up to the recording. So right now, um, if this was set up to be recorded through Echo 360, when they've typed the note, let's say they're 20 minutes into the lecture, they've typed their note, that will automatically appear at the 20 minute mark for them when they come to view the, uh, to view the video. And it will also appear on the slide that they've written that against. So it gives them that context right away. So just a question for you, do you see a use for this in your sort of area or job um, before class? And hopefully when you answer that, it will ask you to uh, justify your answer so you can just give a really um, brief feel. Ah, anyone having any issues? Everyone's typing away. Oh, okay. What kind of phone do you have out of curiosity? iPhone. iPhone, okay. Oh, yeah. No, that's all right. No, it's, um, it's really good. I mean, this is, a, this is very much a trial for us as well. So uh, hearing things like that's actually a really good lesson. Um, and it's definitely something that we've noticed with the tool that we'd like to see is more sort of mobile optimization. So.
Let's have a look. Edit your own for now. Edit. Enter edit. Get IFC, press that little new answer. I've said yes, but I want to edit that bit there. Yeah, you're right. I wanted to write test pre knowledge, but I've written something. Oh, that's it. There we go. Okay. You'll also notice here that um, students have the ability to text their answer in. So if they don't have a smart device, they can also do that. Uh, obviously at the moment, because this is a, an Australian-based version, it's got an Australian mobile, but that is, a, um, that is an option that comes with the tool. So one of the things to consider um, of using this in, in lecture is, and definitely we've had this feedback from academics, is you need more time because obviously this is a, a process that you can't necessarily get through all, all of the lecture content um, that you can when you're just presenting with little feedback. So that's a, a really important design consideration no matter what tool you're using. If you want interactivity, it's thinking about building in the time. But doing creative things like uh, uploading um, a pre-video to summarise the lecture or doing a summary lecture, summary of the slides at the end is another useful way of uh, covering that content. Okay, let's see the... Got my close that then. Right, great to see. We've got five yeses and... Interesting. Great, so... Um, all very valid uses. That top one is a really interesting one and it's something that we're going to look to explore in the tool a little bit to see whether it can be used um, both synchronously and asynchronously. Okay, again, I'll just cover this very, very briefly. Um, another nice feature is the bookmark. So students have the ability to bookmark slides or particular parts of the video that they find really useful. And what I'll show you at the end is a nice study guide that um, gives them a personalized kind of uh, layout um, to them. So anything that you find important, you can bookmark. There's also the confusion icon up there as well. So that again gives an indicator of if students are confused. So it's another nice little visual thing as part of the tool. Might. Uh, Skip that question and we'll save it for the after class one. So after class, students can go back to the classroom and watch the session if it's been recorded. So if your rooms are set up for Echo360 and you end up going with this particular product one day, then that would be a possibility. Um, but you can also visit the study guide to go over your notes. So I'll show you how that looks now. I'm just gonna pop into the student view. Okay, so here I, I am as a student, and you can see up here that is an example of my note. Now that 005 represents five seconds in to the video, and that one represents that slide. So if I go to, my mouse keeps wanting to disappear. If I then click on this particular one, I can go to that exact part of the video and I can flick between that and the presentation and continue editing my notes. So a really handy feature for students when it comes to studying. Um, they've gone and made all their notes during a lecture. They then come back to this uh, maybe in a month or two's time and uh, their personalised sort of study guide is there ready for them. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Is it possible for the slide there to synchronise with it automatically on the devices so that you know what I'm trying to do is to keep up with you. Right. Yep. So if I forget to do it I still can just Yeah. Not not at um, at the moment. So at the moment it's designed that uh, you as the student dictate what slide you're on and I suppose they've done that 
in case you, you're not finishing typing notes mm. against a particular slide and the, and the lecturer moves on. But that is certainly something that uh, you consciously have to do and I think one of the, I suppose, weaknesses that we see at the moment with this is, um, is being able to make that more automatic. Um, it is relying on the student doing that. Okay, so if I go back to the instructor view, what I'm just going to do now is pop into the analytics. So after class, the lecture is now finished. And what I get is a pretty detailed view of the class. If we go to the one that we're presenting now, and we'll see whether the analytics have appeared. So what I get by default here is the presentation views. So I can see the number of views based on each particular slide. So that's quite a handy feature to have. Is there particular um, slides that students spent more time or spent, I suppose, more hits looking at? When it comes to the recording, it will also show a timeline. So it'll show what parts um, of the video that they've watched. So it might be at the 20 minute mark, there might be a real spike. And again, that's an indicator to go, why have students watched this particular bit more so than, than other parts of the video? Um, it will also uh, display any questions that have been tagged against particular slides. Uh, when they've been confused, what parts, and also a notes word count. So as we can see here, there's been a, um, two words typed on slide 9 and 10. So again, that might give you an indicator of where students are, are taking notes um, more and more throughout the presentation. So this is, um, I suppose, probably the richest analytics that we've seen out of a particular, particular tool that academics can get their hands on and use. And hopefully we can s eventually see this sort of thing being used as part of professional development. So when it comes to reviewing uh, how a lecture went, uh, this could be a really good indicator of, of how students um, found it. Any questions on that? Yeah, so, so what it does is when you click on these particular ones, it just basically bolts them. Um, because there's no questions or there's no one confused, uh, those lines aren't appearing, but they would be there um, otherwise. Also in here is a Q&A. This is used in a really interesting um, way by some of our academics. Some of them are using it as a back channel. So students can have discussions throughout the, uh, the lecture and she encourages them. She might ask them a, a question informally rather than putting up an activity. She might go, what do you think about this particular issue happening at the moment? And they'll all type in the question area. Um, get all questions there and they'll get a list of basically a chat so if you've used Twitter feeds or anything like that before in, um, in particular lectures this is a sort of a another way that uh, this can be done so it's basically embedding a, a forum uh, into the video or presentation and we think that that's a, um, a really nice way to do it because quite often forums are, are siloed you know, you're doing work over here and you have to get out and go into the forum over here. Whereas this is ingrained right in the tool. So we're hoping that's going to lead to more discussion. And certainly when it's, uh, when it's used by academics and understood that way, um, we have so far been seeing it being used in that manner. It's also uh, a nice way of, of academics saying, um, particularly ones that aren't used to the style of, of delivery, to ask students to put in questions and they'll uh, answer them all either at the end of the lecture or they'll log on an hour later and, and do a follow-up. And again, students can bookmark particular questions. So if something of real interest came up that another student asked, they can bookmark that and it goes into their study guide. So that's, um, that's effectively the tool itself. What I'm just going to do now is, is show you um, how you can go about creating it yourself, um, what it's actually like as an academic to, to upload and get in. And the answer is it's pretty straightforward.
So here I can go to edit presentation. And I can either add in activities, and I'll show you the, the various ones. So I put up a couple of um, image ones there. I quite like that particular question type because it gives a really good visual indicator. Um, and it's quite, quite a powerful sort of feedback mechanism. You've also got multiple choice, uh, short answer, ordered list, which is weighting of priorities. Um, it can be used in that way. And you've got a numerical question type as well. But if I just wanted to do the real basic, what I can do is I can either create blank slides, but most of our staff will just upload slides and they'll just upload a PowerPoint file. So it accepts PowerPoint or PDF. And it turns each uh, slide or page into a, into a particular number. And then you can go in and add activities and drag them um, in between the particular slides. So we've found uh, we show our academics once and we don't need to show them again. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. So any questions on that? Very good. Any questions on the tool itself or comments? It's a lot to take in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it was very fiddly, and obviously this does a lot more in terms of fiddles and, and that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, it is a, it is a similar sort of tool. Uh, what, what is nice about this is obviously as well is you get the video component towards the end, so you get the, you get the recording. But um, with all those types of tools, I think we, we've certainly seen that academics really want to be able to do more interactive things like this. The problem with uh, Socrative and other tools is it's often a licensing issue more than anything. It's often restricted to 50 students. Um, in some of our courses, we have 1,500 students. So it um, becomes a, a difficult task to, uh, to set that up for that size. So we see this particular tool as a great opportunity to, um, I suppose, improve the lecture experience on scale. Um, and it, it's hopefully going to allow us to do that. Um, the, I suppose one of the key takeout points for us is uh, We've left some academics to basically uh, do what they're doing and, and use it very passively. So they might just upload their presentation and they might put in one question, one or two questions. We found when that happens, students don't really use it. They don't really log on because we've got all the rich analytics. We can see all that. Um, but when it's designed and thought about really well, students are getting on and using it. So. Probably the key message is, is uh, if you want to utilise a tool like this, um, to think about change the changing the practice a bit um, to get the full experience out of it. Yep. Um, no, no, absolutely. Um, the whole aspect of just going through the bar is great for me. Yep. So, uh, yep. No, so, some, some do. Some staff um, don't want to actually want to disable the chat function or the Q&A function. Um, what we tend to say to staff is, is, you know, you set the expectation. So if you say to your students at the beginning, use the chat, feel free to use the chat throughout. However, I'll only be checking it during the break or at the end. Then immediately that kind of wipes that notion out and, it, and of course you can still use the, the traditional hand up um, method. Um, yeah, we've, we've found that that it's tends to be used by really experienced tutors that, are, um, that have kind of been looking for that for a while and now it's come, they're kind of really getting in, involved and in, in using it that way. Great. Interruption and that's very comfortable for me. Cool. Um, 
great, um, great. I haven't tried it yet, but I can imagine it might not be that far away from. Yeah, cool. Cool. Oh, that's really good to hear. Any other sort of comments? Questions? Um, we have used, yeah, it's, it's a really good point. We've used it with 200. Um, we put it in a really challenging lecture space. So we've got five lecture theatres that are all in really close proximity with each other. So at any time there might be 2,000 students throughout. So we're really testing the Wi-Fi capacity and it's, um, it's probably at the moment the biggest risk to us because uh, if you don't have Wi-Fi access or coverage, um, it completely inhibits your ability to use the tool. So what we keep feeding back is regardless, because this is still a trial for us, it's not something we'll necessarily go with yet, but we think there is a big demand for interactive type of lectures. So whatever we go with is going to need really good good Wi-Fi. It, it does, yeah. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose um, I suppose there's a couple of ways. One thing is you might hide that slide, obviously. Um, but staff don't te or students, sorry, don't tend to um, to click on those videos during class. Um, or if they do, they get a little bit embarrassed and and stop. Uh, however, we did turn on live streaming as an experiment and we suddenly realised the, the teacher was saying, oh, I was getting echo in the recording. Excuse the pun, but um, what was actually happening was it was broadcasting basically her through the, si through the system again and it was broadcasting for all the students. So we quickly turned that off and said, you know, there needs to be a way in the tool to distinguish that you're n not actually in class. Um, but that, that again opens up real potential for us to be able to live stream lectures and you know it's nice to have that option for future reference. Um, so what we've certainly found is um, in terms of the note taking students uh, tend to like using their own way of doing notes so if you are to do this I would encourage you to um, really uh, attempt to give them a go of using it because one of the benefits is that it all syncs up at the end but obviously students have their own way of taking notes at the moment and they won't necessarily uh, see the benefit until it comes to that study guide at the end and then they might go oh I wish I'd use this for notes um, so we're we're sort of saying feeding back to Echo 360 at the moment that we see the tool being used more for the activities that's where um, we think the uh, the benefit for us lies um, and the large reason for that is we want to be more I suppose social and inclusive in our learning whereas the note taking is sort of quite individualized um, and you know everyone sort of keeps that to itself so that's where we're asking them more and more to focus on the tool um, and, and hopefully they, they go down that path. Yeah, we've, um, we've seen probably very few students actually using paper notes. Um, a huge amount of them are bringing in laptops, um, and this was even before. It's, it's really increased even in the last 12 months, where it's, um, I would probably say, even without this tool, 90% of students now have laptops in the class. Um, the, I suppose the other thing is, is that they may not necessarily log on and use it. One of the other nice features of it is if they do log in, it captures their attendance. So for those of you that um, are required or like to take attendance, this will capture when they log in and give you that in the, um, in the analytics. Uh, and if I go back to... Um, Yep. Would you have to 
resort to going back to PowerPoint? You would, yep. There is, there is actually a plugin to PowerPoint. So uh, there, there's two ways. You can use the way of uploading directly to the system as I showed you, but you can also download a little add-in if you've got, um, I think it works with 2010, yeah, Office 2010 or higher. Yeah. That allows you to present in PowerPoint, but you can also add in activities. Um, Absolutely. Yep, yep. We always encourage um, uh, our staff to have that their PowerPoint available, okay. just in case, particularly for a trial. Um, so the other thing uh, around the analytics is, um, and we haven't explored this too much yet, but you can um, start to get the least engaged students. No surprise to see Bart Simpson at the top. Um, but you also get where students are confused amongst the slides. And this is a very, very sort of advanced thinking, but in the um, engagement settings, apologies again for the mouse, I have to keep following it. You can actually set metrics around what's important in terms of engagement. So if attendance is really, really important to you, you can add a f you can drag that along and make that a full weighting. Uh, if you want them taking notes, etc. Um, but you might feel that the video views aren't important, so you might move that along the scale. So that will set that engagement score for students. Um, and again, we haven't even really begun to thought about to, to think about what those metrics might look like. But there are sort of predefined ones, so. There is an option for remote learning, so if they're off-site, where it takes away the attendance but gives a lot of importance to the, the video views and the presentation views. So uh, yeah, pretty, pretty powerful sort of stuff. And finally, you can get a breakdown of students. One of the things that we've identified as a, um, as a bit of a weakness of the tool at the moment is you can't actually see what students put what um, in, in each activity. You get an overall activity score, but you can't go to an individual question and see what they are, see how they performed. And oh, for some reason it's making me scroll right across, but you, with each student you get, did they attend? I think I've set a different time for this particular one, so that's why it's showing zero for everyone. Did they ask questions? Um, how did they go? 40 out of 50 and the notes word count as well. So how many notes are they typing? So again, a bit of an indicator at, at a student level around um, what students are, are doing in the, in the tool. Um, I haven't had anybody do that yet, but um, I personally I'm a big fan of giving students the analytics. They can't, they can't necessarily see this, but quite often um, staff will hint and say, I noticed that quite a few of you haven't watched the video. Please go ahead and do so. I can see those sorts of things and keep it quite generic. Um, some staff are exporting this in Excel and using a whole lot of metrics around student student data and they actually get a, um, a mark in terms of how they're, you know, whether they're discu you know, using discussion forums and things like that and they may use this as part of that, um, but I don't think it has at this stage. Yeah, yep. Again, I think that's setting the expectations as well around. Um, one of the things about the confusion thing is you might not necessarily know why they're confused. So um, one staff member immediately pointed out, if you are confused, please put in the chat what you're confused about. Um, but yeah, it might just be a thing of stopping because it's quite visual and you see that little flag. It might be a case of pausing and going, oh, what are you, what are you all confused about? Um, yeah. Any other questions? Could be about this or, or anything educationally related. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, sure. A lot, a lot of our staff um, aren't at the moment doing much with video and flipped. They're, they're giving a lot of um, reading materials. We use uh, Harvard Business Publishing in the business school, which has um, really good case studies and useful resources. We, we pay a, a subscription to that. Um, so we, but we have identified that we want more staff to do video. So I've actually just set up a video um, podcast room that uh, g gives staff professional equipment, but easy to use. And they can draw over a, a giant um, tablet screen and they can annotate. And we're then gonna use this tool as a way of uploading the video. The main benefit of using it over something like YouTube is, the, firstly, the workflow's a lot simpler. It's literally, um, once you've, you've hit stop and you've done your edit, you publish to the particular course. Um, but the main thing is just around the analytics. A lot of staff have, um, I suppose in the past, been a bit uncertain about using flip materials because they don't have a sense of whether their students are engaged. So the fact that they can see that information, it gives them a lot greater control over um, being able to prompt students and they may even initially start by playing the video firstly in class. Um, but part of it, it gives us a good, um, a good conversation around how to design as well. There's some really good MOOC data out there that says uh, video should be six minutes or less. Anything over the six minute mark, they drop off. So again, we can use the metrics there to say, we'd recommend you shorten your videos um, and chunk them up a little bit to, to get students um, watching them more. Is anyone trying flip in their teaching? Curious? Okay, what, what would you use? Yeah, so it is really a, a form of flip. I suppose it's been a it's been a hot word um, recently. It's um, something more and more of our staff have been doing. We've actually created um, flip spaces, which are, are really flexible spaces. And if you watch that video um, that I did put on that presentation, it's got an example of those being used. Um, we tend to now um, think see f flip learning as one part of active learning, one strategy of of active learning, because really what we want to do when our students are in the classroom is, is have them doing things and you know, being at the center and, and doing activities. So um, Flipped has definitely helped support that um, and make that happen. And I think we did it very well with our nursing students, um, especially we started doing it with our year twos. So we give them an awful lot of stuff that they need to read, look at YouTube videos, the whole shebang, and Great. they come to us and it is a skill session. But we are implementing some of the more difficult ones seems to work really well. Great. Once they've realised on the first time that actually we are not going to be spoon feeding them with PowerPoints, they are expected to come with some knowledge so we can increase that knowledge. Um, it works really, really well. So after that first week where some of them are ripped in because they've done nothing, we yep. usually find that they will just rip on and have a nice time. Excellent, yeah. I, I really like that method as well because what it says to students is you have to go out and find some stuff. We're not going to give it to you because out in industry, um, you know, how often are you given the information? You know, you've always got to go and find it, and the internet has obviously really radically changed that um, more and more. So, lovely. No, that's all right. Um, we had a um, yeah we had a really heartening message from a um, blind student who who actually thanked us um, because it was it was really beneficial to them um, so it does work pretty well it works with uh, jaws readers um, and I think they've designed it very much with that in mind so um, yeah yep so yeah we need to do a little bit more testing on that but so far. It looks um, fairly useful. So there is um, some documentation. It's it's help. Dot, uh, I think it's help. Echo three sixty. Org. Au. So that just kind of gives you some 
uh, some guides about how to use it from the instructor or the um, student perspective if you wanted to have, a, have another look in a little bit more detail. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're pretty close to getting to an evaluation stage. Um, we've, we've only been using it very sort of, um, cautiously is not the right word, but we haven't put a lot of emphasis on it. It's sort of very much see how it goes this semester, and next semester we're going to look to ramp it up a little bit and, um, and try and formalise it a bit more. Yeah. It, it does, yeah, and, and we've used similar tools in the past, and um, the feedback we've, we're given is, is very strong, um, or very high, and interestingly, we've used similar tools in our flip spaces, and they've actually had uh, not as a greater impact, and we think the reason is, is that when they're in a static lecture environment, it's much more transformative, whereas when they're in a, in a flip type classroom and they're doing a lot of activity, they're talking to each other, they're you know, they're up on the whiteboard, they're being really active, and then they're asked to go to a tool and do more stuff, and they're going, oh, no, I'm, I'm happy to stay on the whiteboard and we'll talk about it here. Whereas they don't get the opportunity to do that in a lecture. So the fact they've got something, um, yep, is, uh, is yeah, more transformative. Do you get much silliness? Yes, <laughs> to, to begin with. Um, <laughs> great, oh, thank you. I hope you've um, found that valuable. If you've got any follow-up questions, feel free to... Yeah, yeah, so the, 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 the background is, is that Eco360 purchased a product called Lecture Tools, which was sort of in the lines of um, what Socrative does. So that Lecture Tools was something created by Perry Sampson, who you may have heard of. Um, and basically he created Lecture Tools because he had no idea about what his students were thinking um, when it came to, to presenting. So. He built that, Echo purchased that and it morphed it into their, their product um, because they, they believe that's where the, the future's going as well. So. Great. Oh, thank you.